Hi guys, today we're at the Classica Refugium near Stuttgart. Not far away from here is probably one of the best kept places in the automotive sector, the Porsche Development Center in Weissach. And as you can see in the background today, we're going to give you a special insight into the heart of it, the Porsche Design Studio. We will unveil exclusively some studies that have been well kept secrets up to now. So here's a little sneak peek for, uh, well, no. Stay tuned for our Porsche Talk Unseen. Hi everyone and welcome to the Porsche Talk Unseen. Great that you're joining us digitally. Yes, Unseen, that's kind of a motto of 2020, at least when it comes to real life meetings. All the more, we are very pleased that you're joining us today virtually and hopefully in a very active way because we're interested in your opinions and questions. So therefore, use the integrated chat functions and I will ask your questions at the end of the talk in the Q&A session. If you've got any problems with the chat function, and you'll find a description in the invitation letter. Well, before we start, let me ask you a very private question. How many secrets do you have? Five? Ten? Twenty? More? According to a study, you all have exactly 13 secrets. That's at least what psychologist Michael Slabian found out in a study with over 3,000 test persons. I'm pretty sure that he has a lot more due to his job, and I'm super excited that we will be airing some of them today together with him. So welcome Michael Mauer, Head of Design at Porsche. Hi, Michael. Hello. First of all, I have to ask this, that question. Do you have more private secrets or more business-related secrets? That's a good question. Most likely more business-related uh, secrets, and this is a pretty big part of my life. <laughs> so we help you today. We will be airing some of them, but we're not only just airing some of those veiled models here. We also want to give the audience a little insight into your work. For example, how you use technology, how the workflows are, but we're not only doing that by our own. We also have a special guest for you, so stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. Yes, yeah, so let's start right away. Maybe First of all, I think we need a basic understanding of what you and your team are doing. So can you sketch or paint the pict picture for us um, how you work from the first sketch until the market-ready model? Mm -hmm. Let's say the design process is a very well-defined process with different steps where you start with the idea that still starts with the sketching, either really with a pen and paper or digitally. Then uh, these ideas are transferred into uh, data, surface data, and uh, then in our case a Porsche milled into either scale models or full-size models, physical models. So this process, as I said, very well defined. The starting point is different. It could be the successor of an existing model, then it's very well timed, or as uh, today when we talk about studies, uh, you could say the starting point is slightly different. You named already the digital part of your work and I think it's very well known that a lot of OEMs are focusing very heavily right now on 3D models because you can save costs or dry out crazy things. So how does it work for you? I mean, definitely um, this process or as well our process is a combination of traditional process with physical models and the digital process. We at Porsche 
uh, are deeply convinced that the combination, or how we call it, this ping pong, so we go from the digital world into the physical world and back, that this ping pong process is really, uh, in the end, uh, will help us to come to better results because you see things either in the, in the physical world or in the digital world. Sometimes you don't see things in one of the other worlds. And with this experience, you really uh, make much bigger progress in the project. So where do you feel more comfy, more in the digital world or more in the analog world? Let's say uh, due to my age, uh, I feel definitely more comfortable in the analog world. I'm still sketching with paper and pencil. Um, but, you know, in the end, um, it is just a different tool. Uh, still, as a designer, you have to have the imagination, the idea, and to bring it either to paper or into the computer. Um, but for me, it's definitely the paper and the pencil. Speaking of technology, that already hits nearly every part of our everyday life and of course the mobility as well. So when we think about those driving assistance systems, for example, um, radar or cameras, they already shape the exterior design. How much does it really influence your work? I mean, uh, as a designer, um, you have an idea for the shape and the character of the design of the car, but um, everything we do in the end um, is based on existing technology in a way we have to wrap it. And um, so sometimes it's really challenging because all the components you were mentioning have to be part of the exterior design. But sometimes when technology is changing, for example, from the com traditional combustion engine to the electromobility, um, that can offer and give us as well more freedom since the components become smaller. And I think this is a very good moment to unveil our first model because technology plays also a big role um, at this design study. It actually prevented this study from being developed further, but I think you have more details. So let's unveil our uh, first design study, the Porsche 919 Street. So... Here is the beauty, and I think you can give us some more details about... Yeah, as I said, um, when we talk about studies for the future, it's, uh, the idea is always to travel really 30, 50 years ahead and um, see what is possible and then going back, and that influences what we are doing today. And the starting point can always be very different. In that case, it was the starting point was the decision from Porsche to leave the Le Mans series, this LMP1 technology, which uh, yeah, from the Porsche technology was extremely successful, was existing. And the idea there was, uh, can we do a kind of street legal version based on that technology? And therefore, as you mentioned, the technology was existing, so the freedom in a way was limited. Um, but then we were building around uh, this car. And um, what is always our intention, that these models um, then are a starting point for discussion in the company, if it would make sense to realize this, to bring it on the street. And in that special case, um, it was as well the technology then was in the end avoiding to bring it to the, uh, to the road because this racing technology is so complicated and highly complex that it would, be, would have been hard uh, to give it really into customer hands. Mm -hmm. According to um, brain scientist Gerhard Roth, 80% of the people are change aversive. That means simply that they don't like changes. And you have the master task not mm -hmm. only to find the balance between habits and necessary further development, but also you're not allowed to change anything which is connected to the DNA of Porsche and, of course, to the model. So can you tell us something about the non-touchable parts of the design of Porsche? Yeah, again, this is, uh, if we compare projects like uh, production car projects, where we really have, uh, based on our design principles or design criteria, we have certain uh, things described that uh, we basically don't touch. 
if we talk about this kind of visions for the future, since we go so far into the future, there are basically no conventions, there are no restrictions, Every be, uh, everything can be questioned. And uh, by having this freedom, again, we, we, we collect some experiences um, that then might influence on the, our view on, on the current, current products. But uh, it is to find this balance, to build up this tension between the history, the elements, the design elements, the design language is based on, and uh, the task and the challenge to further develop it. Um, so maybe that's really the most challenging uh, part of my task. Yeah. But there are new things happening. And with the Taycan, the new sport cars uh, era in an electric way came up. So um, what remained from the Porsche DNA still in the Taycan? Yeah, I mean, the, the Taycan as well, let's say the, the, the car as it looks like, in a way had as well its origin in one of the studies. But it started as a completely different car with a completely different technology. So we did just a, let's say, super sports car with four seats, but it would have been hard to realize uh, this with the, the performance customers expect from Porsche. So then a couple of years later, we pulled it out again um, and said as a, as a proportion, as an architecture, that would be nice for being the first uh, electrical car. Um, but we knew as well that the design language was um, not modern enough. And then we looked at other studies uh, that uh, had been much further in the future and took elements from these studies and applied it to, uh, at that time it was called the 960 Turismo, into this Mission E show car and then in the Taycan. So again, it is sometimes it's just a design element, sometimes it's the whole architecture and proportion, but again, if you don't uh, go into so far into the future, you won't have this, uh, let's say, findings and uh, you won't have this experience. Yeah, but you always have to work in the future because you design those future cars. How long do you take from the first sketch to the market-ready model? One of the last secrets of the car industry. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to reveal today everything, <laughs> <laughs> literally. Yeah. So, again, it depends uh, as well on the characteristic of the project. I, I used to say the, the really intensive time in the design department is one and a half year. Um, but if you, and then it's a question, when do you start to count and when is really the start of production? Uh, but uh, I used to say whenever we present a new production car uh, to the public, the new 911, then in a way it's almost an old timer for the designer because we already, already started to work on the next generation. So you started to work uh, on the Taycan years ago, and let's yeah. say um, if you started more than seven years ago, it was very quiet uh, on the electric market, at least on, at the customer's side or on the customer's side. But you really um, hit the bull's eye with the Taycan. So how do you get the feeling for the upcoming spirit and the, yeah, the, the time ahead? I think that's again the beauty of uh, that uh, we as designers uh, get this freedom um, to go so far into the future, where I think it's as well a, a, a great sign of confidence in our work that uh, the board members uh, or the CEO, Oli Blume, just gives us a budget without knowing really what will be the result. But since we have done this, as I said, with the Taycan, um, we were then, when the decision was taken to go into this electrical world, we were much faster because years before we had already found an architecture that we believed then is very well applicable to this new generation. Um, and uh, again, this going into the day after tomorrow and then go around there, develop scenarios and concepts, then do studies like this, uh, even as physical models, as a base for a discussion. And with this um, findings um, that change your state of mind, and with this you go back to tomorrow. Um, and uh, I think that's one of the, the, the keys for the success of the Porsche brand, that we do this. 
So before we unveil our next models, um, don't forget to ask your question in the chat. I will ask them at the end of the talk in the Q&A session. And before we unveil our next model, we're going to unveil our next guest. <laughs> And here is our next guest. He's a photographer and the editor of the magazine Curves, Stefan Bogner. Great to have you here. Hi, Hi. Stefan. Thank you. Hi. You were involved in that project from the very first moment. So tell us something. How did that project came about and how much persuasion did you have to put into it to convince the people that it's a good idea to show all those insights into the sacred halls of the design studio? Well, the birth of uh, Unseen was while taking pictures already of some cars. And I know the, the, the Porsche brand through the 356, through the 911, through the race cars, Boxster, of course. And there's so much more going on in Weissach. I would call it the Weissach vibe. And there was a simple question while we had some good coffee at your studio. <laughs> Why don't we show it to the public? A very easy question, actually. Um, so that's how it started. So you created uh, a hashtag for right now, uh, the Weissach vibe, very cool. But uh, Michael, I have to ask you that. How many calls did you have to make to convince your, your colleagues and, and all the other guys in your office to say, yeah, that's a good idea, let's show it to the audience? That's uh, another secret, not of the <laughs> car industry, that's my secret. Uh, there were some, uh, let's say, talks, meetings, because it's very unusual for the car industry to, uh, to show this uh, yeah, secret stuff to the uh, public. Yeah, but we're so happy that you decided to do that, actually. And now we come to our next revelation moment. And I think we can lift here that. And I just tell the people that this is the Porsche Vision Spider. And maybe, Michael, you can tell us what is the basic idea of this design study? Yeah, again, uh, always different starting points, but uh, as well, based on the discussions uh, during our espresso meetings, <laughs> it's always this smaller, puristic, uh, reduced car where basically the Porsche brand took its start. That's uh, always something we are dealing with in that special case and we have done different models in that special case it was all about uh, trying to build up a relation to a historic uh, car the 550 um, and that was then the inspiration and we took some elements like the 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 painting or how the fenders are done we took this inspiration from from the back from the past, from the James Dean past. I see the sparkle in the eyes and I hand over to you, yeah, Stefan. I just, uh, it's very nice. This car is, means a lot to me because I just do a book uh, about the 550 Spider for uh, two years already. And we just drove uh, two cars on the Alpine road. It's such a fantastic small car. And that's, I think the DNA of Porsche is small and powerful and light. And this car reflects it perfectly. You know, it's just, it's not big, it's very small. It has all the little details um, from the 550, like, uh, like the back here, the fender. You know, it's called Little Rebel, you can't see. You see all the air intakes. Uh, of course, the, the color uh, blocking silver red is, is, is so nice. So it's just, I think, a perfect new interpretation of the 550, of the legend. I, I want to jump in with a question because I know your magazine from very cool cars on a curvy road, but now you have here a static car in a clean environment. How difficult was it to take those cool and fancy pictures? <laughs> very easy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> the design was so exciting. You can't say anything different, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, of course, I like them driving more, but it, you know, the cars are so beautiful. It, uh, the, and the concept was uh, taking pictures at their birthplace. You know, we just had 20 meters around uh, the studio to, to take pictures. But, you know, everybody who sees that car, even not moving, imagines his own picture. One is like, drives somewhere in around San Francisco. The other mind is somewhere in the Alpine Road. So it's okay to not drive it. 
So, Michael, the origin um, idea or the origin car you looked at was the 550 of James Dean. So what impressed you most and inspired you most of that car back then? Yeah, you know, in, in general, if we do a design, one thing is just the surface treatment and the design. But we always want to express uh, and, um, le let's say, influence the, the fantasy of customers that look at the car. And, uh, I mean, again, James Dean uh, as an actor with the 550, I mean, that has, that's, this is really an experience at itself. And uh, as a designer working for Porsche, you have to look back to that car because it's not just the shape of the car, it's everything that you, let's say, connect with this. And we wanted to bring all of this feeling, uh, even though none of the designer who worked on this was uh, born at that time back there. But that was the idea to bring this into the design of that car that when people look at it, no matter if it's driving or standing around, that you immediately have all these pictures in your mind. Maybe you can show us some details here, what um, is very interesting from your designer perspective. Yeah, again, what I said, I mean, first of all, and as uh, Stefan mentioned, it's a small, very compact car, um, which is really a challenge. Uh, we were talking about technologies with today's technology, so very compact. Then, as well, details where we wanted to introduce new design elements, for example, this headlamp. I mean, the 550 Spider had these round headlamps. Um, so that could be maybe maybe the next evolution of that uh, headlamp. Then, as we said, uh, with this color scheme, uh, very um, yeah, uh, subtle hints to the past. Um, then on the back again, um, it is the, the treatment of the surface, um, the tension that is in these surfaces, is typical Porsche, is the modern characteristics, but again, with some elements, you can easily f uh, see the connection to this 550 Spider. And that's how we try to do things, uh, even when we look back into history, that it is not a replica, um, but it's a modern interpretation of the theme back there. So Stefan, if I allowed you to take just one picture of a detail of the car, what would you choose? I would choose the back. <laughs> <laughs> again. Yeah, again the back. <laughs> I love this detail. You know, it's 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 of course something Porsche lovers like, you know, because they know what 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 this means, yeah. So, I'm going for this line. Okay. And um, Michael, you've been a chief designer at Porsche since 2004. That makes you only the third uh, chief designer after Ferdinand Alexander Porsche. And he is well known as a functionalist. So yeah. do you have that spirit always in your mind when you design cars and even when you test things with your design studies? Uh, we, we try hard. And I think whenever you have a car uh, or a brand like Porsche and cars has this performance, uh, you even have to stick to the functionality because an air intake has a function. Either it's cooling from the engine, from the brakes, or it's aerodynamics. So uh, I think we very much live this uh, culture um, and try to give each and every detail a function. But as I said as well, even the design itself has the function uh, to excite people. Stefan, what was your first thought when you saw that car the first time? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy, actually. Yeah, yeah. drive it right now. All it right. Was, uh, yeah. So um, at the end, I want to know, because it's a design study, which um, yeah, information did you take out of it to use it for other design studies? Or was it just like, oh gosh, this was a, a playground for, for designers and it was so cool, but we can't yeah. use anything of it? So <laughs> that was definitely the case that we had a lot of uh, fun working on this. Um, again, um, it shows that uh, 
we as designers uh, have a very good idea how we can further develop the design language, the surface language. We showed as well that uh, a small car could be very attractive. Um, and as I mentioned with the headlamps, even in the details, uh, there will be a lot of inspiration for future products. Um, so, but uh, still as a designer, you always hope and keep your fingers crossed that uh, your ideas won hit the road. And I think that's a good moment to come to our last, but of course not least model or design study of the day. I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of questions upcoming right now, so please type them in into our chat and I will ask them at the end in the Q&A session. And now is the moment. I'm, I, can, I can say it's one of my favorite design studies here and I think it shows also the craziness of the designers. <laughs> We'll come to our last design study and I'm pretty sure that some Porsche experts out there are asking themselves right now, am I still in the right live stream? What should be underneath which Porsche? And because it's so brilliant, I hand over for the revelation part to Michael and maybe you can tell the audience what's underneath this cover. So underneath this cover we have the Vision Porsche Rendins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is even written here on the side. Uh, yeah, the interesting part of this concept is that uh, in comparison to the other studies, it was a completely different starting point. So it was really, we put out uh, the question or the challenge, how far can you stretch the uh, Porsche design language? Is it possible for a car with this size, with this proportion, with this architecture to apply the, and further develop the Porsche design language that in the end when you look at the car you immediately have the feeling that uh, it is a Porsche and when I look at the car I'm still very happy and I think uh, uh, we managed this pretty well. I have to admit, when I heard about that uh, design study the first time, I was not sure if that is working. But when I see it right now with my own eyes, I have to say, here comes together what belongs together. But in the end, uh, Stefan, you have to sell that to the audience because uh, in the social media part, it's all about feeding the audience with the stuff they want to see. What do you think? Is it a tough task to sell this uh, car as a Porsche to the audience? No, not at all. <laughs> I mean, Rendins is one thing everybody knows. Then imagine a trailer with an old ST or RS in the back. You know, imagine some surfboards, skis, snowboards there. I mean, like this is, for me, it's a dream come true, actually. Um, uh, when I saw it, I ordered one. You know, <laughs> so just put, it, put my name on the list as yeah. well. <laughs> okay. uh, I have two, two persons. Kids, you know, this is a car which I actually need every day. So uh, I don't think there's any doubt people would flip out for that car. <laughs> so maybe they will flip out even more when you uh, tell us something about those details, Michael. Yeah, um, again, as I said, challenge was we have a design language established on our uh, production cars. How far can we stretch it? So the approach here, since you have pretty big surface, was really to build up a certain tension in the surfacing, very reduced, uh, very puristic, but again, having this uh, tension. And then one of the major parts was really to emphasize on the wheel arches, because that gives this kind of yeah, sporty feeling and give that car in this mono volume vanish segment, uh, um, this kind of uh, Porsche characteristics. Mm -hmm. Stefan, you're also the man for the details. What details did you like most when you saw it the first time? Uh, the first time, uh, I liked the surface the most. It's like one surface which goes around. It's, it's so beautiful. It's like attention also. And I like the front very much. Um, <laughs> not, the, not the backside this time? <laughs> <laughs> I like the backside also. Also, but... But the front. <laughs> I like the lightning very much. You know, it's like... It's, uh, I like the lightning design, the intakes. And if you look on the front, of course, I like the one-seater in the middle. This is like a super sports car for me. So it's, it's all world in one, mm -hmm. I, would, I would call it. I mean, just regarding the headlamps, I mean, I'm glad that you're mentioning this. 
because uh, I mean, this is really when we worked on the uh, Taycan or the, the, the Mission E, which was the show car for the Taycan, we were very much uh, inspired by this idea here, how we could further develop our design language uh, in the, on the headlamps. And uh, what you see today on the production car on the Taycan, has here its starting point. Yeah, it's it's like the electric era uh, with what you can see exactly. with the headlights, in, kind of, uh, kind of. Um, but when we're uh, taking a look back into the year 2004 when you started, what has changed since then uh, in terms of those uh, design studies? I mean, a lot of things have definitely changed if we talk about the process, the possibilities uh, with the uh, digital world, we can go into virtual world, uh, we can uh, play this ping pong. Um, so definitely things have changed there. We became faster, we have more possibilities. What didn't change is really this mindset, this spirit, this Weissach Porsche vibe, uh, where say everybody is really uh, has uh, is enjoying looking into the future, exploring all these possibilities, and in a way um, is as well very open to question things. So this didn't change, and I think is really the key for the success of the brand. Talking about this uh, Weissach vibe, this hashtag, uh, Stefan, you are going to publish some photos of this project on your social media channels. What do you, what do you think? What will work best for the audience? I have no idea. I think <laughs> every car is so special. Every car will find its audience. I mean, it's 15 cars. Uh, so... I'm totally open. I will be surprised how the reactions will be. Yeah, and some of the audience maybe uh, will check out your Instagram profile and they can, they can like and vote with uh, their own opinion. Um, at the end, I really have to ask it a, that question because uh, as I learned today, it's not only for the design part, it's also about learning things for other technologies, for future. So how do you decide what to take and what to toss. Is there any any checklist you use where you say, yeah, this is going well, so we take that? Uh, or is it more like gut feeling? I think there are a lot of uh, people, the decision makers in the big companies that would love to have this list because then it would be pretty easy to take decisions, uh, basically saying, okay, this project most likely is more successful than the other. So um, I think this is not possible, or at least I can't do this list. So the big question is then, if you go into this future, if you go into this day after tomorrow, then first thing is you explore there everything. Um, you, you develop uh, scenarios, concepts, and then you have basically different possibilities to approach these future requirements. And then in the end of the day, it's really a question how do we then in the design department decide and uh, uh, honestly I think it's just the intuition. But that's based on experience of many, many years and maybe designers have this, uh, yeah, since they always work in this kind of fantasy world in a way, um, yeah, that's a kind of uh, experience but uh, it's a gut feeling, yeah. So he's literally the man of secrets because I think if you had this checklist, you wouldn't reveal it to the world. I'm pretty sure about that. Stefan, um, what design study what would you wish for and why? I mean, you, you saw a lot of studies already, more than we can show here, but well, is there any study left uh, you would love to see? I would like to see a drone, a two-seater drone, a silent two-seater drone to fly because I think... That's the next step of transportation, will be flying. You know, people do wingsuits already, unbelievable, 30 years ago. <laughs> and actually, I would like to have a cargo bike, a cool Porsche <laughs> cargo bike for, because I'm living in a city, would be a, hmm. would be a challenge. A big inspiration for me already. These are completely different starting points to talk about studies without wheels or just two wheels. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, you can see it as an official request right now. Um, at the end, I have to ask one question because um, today the, the, yeah, the mobility sector is more becoming like a smartphone on four wheels. So the interior design um, is increasingly important to uh, the buyers. So do you have already some interior design studies or is that just mm. a thing for the future? 
No, definitely. I mean, the, I say interior experience is part of these studies. And uh, even if it starts uh, like this car, uh, there is an interior. So for each of these studies, we have uh, ideas for the interior. But at the end of the day, a uh, few of our secrets we could, uh, should keep for ourselves. So wait and see. At least for our next talk uh, unseen, so you have to keep those secrets, but we're going to answer some of the questions and this is where we hand over to our Q&A part. So it's not a smartphone I use, but it's a tablet and there I have the question from our Q&As here. So the first question is, how many studies had been developed so far? Um, a lot of studies. <laughs> <laughs> so as I, I don't know if it's it's in general for yeah. Porsche or since you you've been the no, uh, I mean, chief designer. It's, it's it's part of our daily business, so to say. So over the year, we always develop I don't know maybe 10, 15 uh, studies uh, in different stages. Uh, either it's just a sketch or a full size model. So it's an ongoing process. Uh, and over the year, yes, there might be a couple of models. So how many have you seen already? Not just photographed, seen. <laughs> uh, all of them. I don't know anymore, actually. A lot. Must be more, you know, than, more than 20. You know, the problem is he knows basically <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, here's the next question from our chat. Can you mention three design elements you believe we will continue to see on a Porsche model in 2050? Are you still working there? 50. <laughs> uh, now I have to go back because we are already in 2060. <laughs> uh, I mean, as well, hard to predict, but uh, some main design principles. Uh, again, if you talk about how we treat surfaces, I think we will still see in the future. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons why we do these studies uh, to further develop it. and. Uh, so we are not yet in 250. So. so from a perspective of a Porsche addicted and a photographer, what do you think, what should remain until 2050 and ahead? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, well, I'm I think the logo, of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> because I, still, I think it's... It's brilliant. It's brilliant, timeless. Uh, I have no idea, actually. Uh. But that's a good Maybe keyword. Maybe fly line or something. But it's mm. a, good, a good keyword, the logo, because there's another question. Um, the red bus has a new Porsche crest. Is that holy or could you imagine a further developed crest in the future? I mean, uh, I'm very grateful for this question since it really shows the character of these studies that uh, when we do this, there are no restrictions, even the badge, but if you would go back in history, you would see already how often the badge has been changed and further developed. Um, and uh, here we took the freedom just to do another proposal. Uh, but uh, yes, it's definitely something with the badge, with the crest, with the logo, you are very, very carefully. So um, I think that will take another, <laughs> I don't know, maybe 50 years <laughs> before we see such a badge. Um, Speaking of uh, challenges, um, there's another question. What is the most challenging design um, of Porsche? The most challenging, yeah, I mean, the lo most challenging part is uh, really uh, if you have a brand like the Porsche brand with this strong history, where you always try to uh, create a connection to the past, but still uh, try to be uh, progressive and uh, let's say keeping the design uh, language very fresh. Uh, I would see that this is really the biggest challenge for us designers. So what is the biggest challenge for a photographer? Which model is uh, very challenging to, to capture? Like from these we have seen in the yeah. book? It was this one actually. So why? Uh, because the surface, it's, it's a one surface model, it, you know, you have, there are hardly any shadows to play with, so that's, that was the hardest. <laughs> but I think you did a good job. Thank you. <laughs> so um, next question is, uh, how do you decide which sketches will make it into a clay model and which will be kept in the computer? Hmm. I mean, again, that's, there is no, uh, let's say, uh, existing list. Um, it, it depends really on the project. It depends on 
how much we are convinced that this would have uh, either a chance to be realized later or for example in that example here where we really wanted to uh, find out how far we can stretch our design language. You can't do this in a virtual model. You have to do a physical model really to experience this that you are able to touch it. So there are different criteria, but it's from each project uh, to the other project uh, different. So here's a question. Uh, it's quite similar to that we had talked already about, but I want to ask it anyways. Um, what design feature is untouchable for Porsche? The logo, the badge? <laughs> we talked about that. Yeah, but even there, as I tried to uh, explain, that has been changed uh, slightly over the years. And these studies uh, basically show that um, all the design cues we know today um, um, have to be modified and further developed for the future um, uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, in order to, to still have a very fresh uh, design language. And uh, if you would like to push this process in the first approach, you have to, um, let's say, challenge every uh, design cue. So there, is, there are no restrictions and then you go back. Um, but again, I think these models show you can go pretty far into a new world of design languages. Uh, next question is, what importance does design have for the brand and is this changing? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, now asking the designer, I would say it's the most important <laughs> part. Um, but again, it's always the whole package. But the design of the car, first of all, is the first thing um, that you see on the product. Um, it is uh, not just the the shape, it is as well the, the message that is behind it. So um, design is important for creating brand identity and uh, by this building up a brand. And uh, as a designer, again, uh, I'm deeply convinced in technology. Um, it will be much tougher in the future to differentiate brands by technology. Um, so I'm as well deeply convinced that then design becomes even more important in the future. So from your perspective, what do you say? Is, is that fact changing that design is important for a brand? Yeah, it's getting more important, definitely. So you can see it in the past, it's getting more and more important. So good, a good position for Porsche, I think. For designers. <laughs> for designers and for Porsche. <laughs> so your job is saved. Um, <laughs> next question is a very interesting question. What's the motivation behind making Porsche unseen? And I think the keyword is today. <laughs> today. I mean, that was uh, not uh, um, the, the unseen project was not really uh, a normal project, I would say, with the starting point. And then we knew in the end, basically, there's a start of production uh, in uh, now mid of November. I mean, as we tried to, it was an idea that started. And then since it is very unusual, um, there was a lot of discussion necessary, a lot of meetings, uh, agreements, and then you could say, since we have gone through all these uh, gates in a way, um, then it was just uh, realizing and then it was pretty fast. Um, so you could say in a way by accident that it happens now, could have been happened as well half a year ago or maybe half a year later, but uh, uh, we were deeply convinced that this is a good idea and we are happy that uh, today we can show some of the studies. Yeah, I'm pretty happy as well because I've never seen such studies before in my life and I'm sure the audience out there as well. Um, there's a question and I think we have to, we have to reveal it. You have got 15 um, design studies in the book, right? Yep. So taking those, if you could pick two out of these 15 studies and bring them into production, which ones would you choose and why? Maybe Stefan. Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is my new family car. <laughs> uh, so this is number one. And the uh, 904, the Vision 904. The one liter car is a very small car, sports Wait. car. Beautiful. I would go for it. So maybe I can ask you the last question, which was also integrated in this question. What uh, model are you most uh, proud of? 
That's like uh, asking uh, the parents uh, which of your child's you're most proud of. <laughs> I mean, whenever you're involved in, in the project, uh, that's your favorite baby at the time. Um, so I, I would say I'm proud of all these models. First of all, that we were able to do it, that we succeeded as well uh, with this really challenging project here or other projects. For me, uh, since I love driving and these small and puristic uh, sports cars, for me, uh, all these uh, studies that deal with these small and puristic sports cars are maybe my favorite uh, category of cars. So I think we're running out of time, but I have two questions left here and I want to ask them you. So the next question is, um, what do the Vision Spiders elements point to with respect to the future production cars? Um, as well, hard to predict. Uh, there are a lot of elements and maybe even now we don't know which elements uh, we will use in the future. Uh, but it will definitely inspire us. But it's, it's hard to point out now uh, details. And we also talked about it. It's always uh, yeah, a learning and failing. And also things which are not working are also good for you to know. So I think it's, it's difficult to answer those questions, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, uh, but again, this, doing these studies is part uh, and is showing that uh, it's not so easy uh, to uh, build up a relationship to the future. So here's our last question from the audience. Uh, with Porsche's lineup much bigger now than when Michael joined in 2004, what does he think is the biggest challenge with giving such different cars all that distinctive Porsche, Porsche design feel? I mean, uh, it is challenging uh, as a job, uh, no, no question about it, but it's uh, part of our profession to define what are the design principles that you can carry and uh, apply to different type of cars. And I think we have shown it in the past that it is possible. Uh, we are showing this with these studies. So again, from my point of view, there are no limitations uh, and it's partly uh, yeah, business as usual for a designer. But not business as usual for us. So thank you so much for all these insights and of course for all your answers also, uh, Stefan. Thank you very much. And of course, thanks for your questions. And if you're hyped right now about that project, I've got some advices for you. The Porsche Newsroom publishes a, a series of articles about that design studies and of course also the Web TV format 911 magazine. So stay tuned for more to come and Stefan already has it in his hands. If you are a Porsche fan or you at least so know one, here's a good Christmas gift. The Porsche Unseen book is published now and it's available, for example, in the Porsche Museum shop. And if you say, yes, I really enjoyed that Unseen experience, digital and maybe in the future also with that book, but I want to see those studies on my own. You have to be a little bit patient because in 2021, the museum will show an exhibition with a selection of those studies. So until then, stay healthy and see you then. Stay Bye. tuned.